The BRSCC BMW Compact Cup is brought to you by Nankang Tires and Gas Shops. Drivers are getting ready for the second race of the Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup here at Castle Coombe. And just to give you some kind of idea of how full the grids are, they can't even hold all of the cars in the holding area ready to go out onto the grid. Now, race one, Stephen Daly absolutely dominated, but Mike Parks started well down the grid. The reason being, although he was quickest in qualifying, he had a disqualification. He's made it all the way up into 12th to start in the second race so he's going to be one to watch to see how he goes through the field it's over to Andy McEwen to take you through this exciting race thanks Lloyd I've got a feeling this is going to be a good one here's how they lined up for it Stephen Daly and Owen Hunter on the front row with Ian Jones and Ben Huntley row two well here's the David Bay row three they start this one the way in which they finished the first race so it's Sam Carrington Yates and Tom Langford next ahead of Keith Towers and Gordon McMillan Liam McGill and the remarkable Matt Parks. Craig Jameson and Wayne Flinter next, ahead of Matt Flowers and Tom Griffiths, another one to watch as he continues to work forwards. Andrew Prince and Simon Welch on the ninth row. Mike Doble and Alan Caulfield round out the top 20, ahead of Mark Skeets and Tim Scott Andrews. Mark, of course, trying to recover from that first lap spin in race one. The rest of them file through. We've got another full 33 car grid all the way down to our two retirements from race one alessandro albano and phil adcock at the back well race one stephen daly may have led every lap but that doesn't do the race justice it was super intense super close what will race two bring let's find out the lights go out we are away and racing once more at castle coombe and on board with stephen daly from pole position he's got the best of the start he should lead all the way up towards turn number one there's lots of bumping and boring going on further back now is owen hunter going to be able to find the gap in line or is ian jones going to be able to come through and take second place that's the question on board with david may it's a roadblock in front of us and a roadblock behind stephen daly but look at that ian jones has got up the inside and he goes for the race lead as well oh ian jones into the side of stephen daly he's out wide and ian jones well up for the fight in race number two is trying to take the race lead away remarkable stuff it's all kicked off straight away but look at that they are side by side jones on the inside line leans on stephen daly and he goes through to the race lead more contact between them though jones almost on the grass but he just about hangs on daly second owen hunter third ish but paul hinson is around the outside of him now with david may joining in as well well a dramatic start to the race but Ian Jones from third to first. Contact between David May and Paul Hinton. Hinton on the grass but rejoins as Stephen Daly fired up after that first corner contact. Immediately goes on the attack around the outside of Ian Jones. Down towards Tower. Tries to get the switch back but that's left the door open for Hunter. There's not room for them all side by side. They have to get into some sort of order which they do. And it is Jones in the lead. David May sideways in the background but Daly second. Hunter third. More contact. Paul Hinton and David May together. Hinton. How on earth did David May save that one? He's lost momentum though, up the inside comes Sam Carrington Yates and that can't be Matt Park, surely not, Matt Park's this sensational recovery drive after an exclusion in qualifying, remember this was the circuit 12 months ago where Matt Parks really found some speed and was up there fighting for race wins immediately, it all ended in the tyre wall unfortunately on that occasion, this time around though he is making sensational progress up the order. Back up towards Quarry we go then. Top three cars starting to make a break. Ian Jones going heavily defensive. Stephen Daly tries to go right around the outside. This is a brave move to make, but he might just do it. Lots of respect shown between the pair of them there. No contact between them. Ian Jones could quite easily have run Daly out to the edge of the road there, coming out of the corner. We left him room at the chicane, though. He's not quite as generous, so Daly loses momentum. And Owen Hunt around the outside will move through into second position. Fantastic stuff. So, Stephen Daly, this is exactly what I said in race one. When he's out in front and he gets his head down, he is more than capable of running away and leading every lap. But once he starts getting mixed up with all of the battling behind, it's an awful lot harder to get into any sort of a rhythm, any of the drivers. 
out there will tell you that. And so Stephen Daly in third place now has some serious work to do. And he might not even hang on to third place because Paul Hinton is now breathing down his neck. And it is Matt Parks, remarkably, in fifth position. Matt Parks, car number 38, started race one, 33rd on the grid. And now after only two laps of race two, he's in the top five. Back down towards Camp Corner, come the leaders then. Stephen Daly in third place, right behind uh, Owen Hunter in second position as they work their way now up towards the top of the hill at Avon Rise once again. There's David May, Ben Huntley in behind him. So Huntley not quite having the sort of uh, performance he'd have liked here in his local circuit. Stephen Daly though watching Owen Hunter as he locks up the brakes in front of him. Now Owen spent the entire of race one stuck behind Stephen Daly, knowing that he was quicker than him but couldn't find a way through. Oh, that's Gordon McMillan just grazing the tire barriers on the exit of uh, Quarry Corner. He just about gets away with it. Uh, but yes, uh, Owen Hunter was very frustrated after race one. He knew he had the pace to win it, but he could not break down the defences of Stephen Daly, the race leader. Well, he's ahead of Daly now, but he's still not in the lead because he's now got Ian Jones in front of him. <laughs> Some more drama behind. There are cars everywhere as the uh, midfield squabbles get uh, just as entertaining as the leading one does. But look at this. We've got a seven-car train for the race lead all the way back to Ben Huntley in seventh. I think that's Sam Carrington Yates gone a million miles back. Somewhere, Matt Parks has gone ahead of David May as well. So Matt is now fourth from 12th on the grid in this one. Back through the um, Bobby chicane they go towards the end of the lap. Now Owen Hunter couldn't find a way past Stephen Daly in race one. Can he find a way past Ian Jones in race two? Back down towards the end of the lap they go. Hard on the brakes, through camp corner they go. Plum on that really aggressive curve on the inside line. And Ian Jones has been struggling through there all weekend long. And Owen Hunter wants to take advantage of it. He's got a gap up the inside and Ian Jones has to leave the room for him. So Owen Hunter going for the race lead. Stephen Daly will surely try and take advantage of this as well. He's going to try and push Owen Hunter through the gap. There's contact between them. You can't go three abreast through quarry corner, Stephen. And he sensibly backs out of it. But Ian Jones, unfortunately, the floodgates were open. He goes from first all the way down to third. He's trying to fight back up the inside of Stephen Daly though and he might just do it. He's got the gap up the inside and Ian Jones I think Will he go back through into second place? Yes, he does. So Hunter leads the way. Jones in second. Hunter a bit wide, though, out of the S's. And Ian Jones might have some ideas for getting the race lead back here. On board with Daly. Grandstand view of the leaders as they go side by side. There's contact between the two of them. But that means that Jones gets fully alongside. Down towards Tower Corner. And Ian Jones is about to go back through into the race lead. He leans. Oh, no! Contact between the two of them. And Jones is in the tyre wall. What a shame. It had to end in contact. And Ian Jones is out of the race. So so Daly somehow out of all, he was third a couple of corners ago and now he leads the race. Hunter in second, Hinson is onto the podium and Matt Parks is fourth. So it's all kicked off in race two. I thought this might be a good one, but that is a real shame for Ian Jones that his race has ended in the tyre wall. So it's situation normal at the front of the field. Now it's Daly ahead of Hunter and still Owen Hunter has not led a lap all weekend long despite arguably being the fastest car out there on the track. Here's a replay of what happened then down towards Tower Corner they went. And well, it was just that little bit of contact between the two of them and Ian Jones off into the tire wall. And it's such a shame that that battle had to end in that way. So back through Quarry Corner they go. And it is Daly who's capitalized on all of that to take the race lead away. Maybe a discussion about that contact between Ian Jones and Owen Hunter. We'll have to wait and see what happens post-race. So Any time there is contact between the race leaders, it's always discussed after the race. Uh, almost always, anyway. Um, we'll have to wait and see what the decision is. But it did look as though um, the two of them could have got through the corner without contact. But they were racing very hard for the race lead. And uh, that's just part and parcel of racing in this championship sometimes. On board then with David May in fifth position, following the third-place battle between Paul Hinton and Matt Parks through the uh, right hand at Tower Corner. Now, Matt Parks, if you'd have told him at the start of the day that he could have a podium finish by the end of it, he would have laughed in your face. But he's running in fourth place, and he looks quicker than Paul Hinton at this stage. Remember, he was quickest in qualifying before he was excluded, so he's definitely got the pace. That is, I think, Liam McGill, who has pulled off to the side of the road. Gordon McMillan, I fear, will do likewise, because that car is uh, looking a bit second-hand. Rear bumper hanging off, tyre smoke coming from the rear left corner as the battle is resumed at the front of the field. Owen Hunter on the grass through turn one. That was really close to disaster. It loses him some momentum, though, and so Daly, he looks as though will be able to hang on to the race lead for the time being, but it still looks as though Hunter is the quicker of the two. He just can't find a way ahead. 
back through Quarry they go. Down the short straight towards the S's. Hunter drives the outside line. There's been too wide though over the curbs there for Owen as he comes out of the first corner. Down towards the S's. Side by side action behind. Is that man Parks going through to third place? I think it might be. Watch the background. Who appears in third? Yes, it's Parks ahead. So Matt Parks has got himself ahead of Paul Hinson now. There we see them. Parks, Hinson, May, Huntley. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth places. Corner, come the race leads. No, Hunter sees a gap on the inside line. He's going to go for the race lead. Surely, Daly's really late. He's too late on the brakes. Runs out wide. He's on the dirty side of the road. Just about keeps it off the grass. But that was the mistake that Owen Hunter was waiting for. It's the first real mistake that Stephen Daly's made all weekend long under pressure. And this time, Hunter has finally got through. So now he's got the lead. He's got to try and keep it, and I think the best way to do that now is to get his head down, put in a few qualifying laps, and pull away from Stephen Daly. But that is the easier said than done. I've been saying all weekend long that Owen looks a bit quicker than Stephen. Now is the time to prove it, Owen, because you're in the lead. You've got to try and escape from the reigning champion, though. And it looks to me as though Stephen, in the slipstream, going up the hill, is starting to close back in again. Up towards Quarry they go, and if they continue to dice, then Matt Parks will be with them in a flash. You can be sure of that. Onto the brakes, all oh, lock up for Owen Hunter, and yeah, Daly's back with him. So has Owen Hunter blown his best chance, maybe, to get the race victory here? Because Stephen Daly could possibly get up the inside here towards the S's. No, Owen gets over to defend. Middle ground onto the brakes, then three abreast further back. That is not going to end well, is it? Surely. Once again, keep your eyes in the, on the background because it's all about to kick off. Yeah, we've got Paul Hinton on the grass, got Ben Huntley on the grass. There was not a hope of the wall getting through the S's. Three abreast then, and two of them ended up on the grass, but rejoined without too much damage. So leaders back down towards tower. This is where Daly made the mistake a lap ago. Owen Hunter could not afford to make the same mistake this time, so he fends the inside line. Make sure not to run too wide on the exit. He's okay. They come past the BMW car park at the side of the road down at the S's. Gordon McMillan and Ian Jones' stricken cars parked at the side of the road. They've got a great vantage point, though, for the final few minutes of what has been a sensational race here in the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. This has by far been the best race of the season, I think, and it's not over yet because Stephen Daly will not be happy to settle for second place. You can be sure of that, and he's quick round to the final corner, and he's up alongside Owen Hunter. He's going back there into the race lead. Oh, at the corner where Owen Hunter has been so strong all weekend, and he's made the mistake, and so it's Stephen Daly goes back in front, but he made that look very easy. Owen Hunter will be kicking himself in that car now as he has to once again try and find a way ahead of Stephen Daly. Goes on the outside line on the way into towards Quarry Corner. There's almost contact as he tries to get underneath the Scotsman on the exit of the turn. But Stephen Daly has been here before. He knows how to defend the lead here at Castle Goom for Owen Hunter. He knows where Owen is strong and he knows where he is maybe a bit weak. So he knows where to defend. And uh, with, those, with that sort of information, it's going to be very difficult for Owen Hunter to crack the defences of the race leader. Look at how Matt Parks is closing in though, well he's already got the podium in the bag sure he couldn't win it, well you never know he's with them now and the race at which these top two are dicing, they could always make contact, they could always make mistakes and allow Matt Parks through Stephen Daly almost ran a bit wide there making the same mistake that he made a few laps ago to relinquish the lead in the first place got it back now though not want to give it up once more. Through Bobby's Owen Hunter visibly quicker through there though. Gets onto the rear of Stephen Daly's car as they race down towards Camp Corner. Once again, kicking a bit of the dirt. Daly defending to the inside line, Hunter to the outside. Can't overtake through here really. And now Owen Hunter is stuck in the middle. He is the meat in the sandwich with Stephen Daly in front and Matt Parks now breathing down his neck. He goes for a move that doesn't work. It could cost him second place, and he can little afford to hand those championship points away to Stephen Daly. He's already lost a few to Stephen uh, in race number one, so the gap now has gone out to 17 points between the two of them. It would go out even further in this one if they finish as they are now. Matt Parks has set the fastest lap, though, so far in this race, I can tell you. So he is on for the bonus point for uh, the fastest lap of the race. And it doesn't look likely that anyone's going to beat that now because they're all starting to trip over each other once again at the front of the field. Now, this is not what Stephen Daly wanted to see. This is Colin Way, who is about to go a lap down. He was the driver who rather held up Stephen Daly in race one and almost cost him the race win. This time, though, thankfully, they catch him a slightly more favourable piece of the road. So Stephen Daly and Owen Hunter both able to go through. And that part of the held up. With the rate at which these two are battling for the lead, he should be able to close back in again fairly shortly. Daly once again leads them out of Tower Corner. White line, uh, wide line on the way into the corner. Opens the door so tantalisingly for Owen Hunter behind, but Owen just dare go for the move in case Stephen turns in and they make contact because that could wipe them both out of the race. 
and with Owen having already been involved in contact once in this race with Ian Jones, he really doesn't want to attract the attention of the Clark Force any further. So Bailey leads them out of camp, up across the start finish line. Running out of time now though is Owen Hunter. By my reckoning, two more laps to go. Bonnet still flapping in the wind as it has been all day long after that testing crash for Owen. Make their way over Avon Rise once again. Daly will surely defend the inside, which he does. Be careful though, can't afford to outbreak yourself here, which Stephen Daly has. He runs a bit wider. No, he doesn't seize the gap on the inside. No, Daly once again is able to move over to defend. Behind, you see David May and Ben Huntley are still scrapping. I think that's fifth, uh, that's fourth position that they're fighting over now. That's another interesting uh, battle, but we dare tear our eyes away from this leading duo because they are still going at it. Matt Parks are beginning to wonder whether maybe he's decided, Do you know what, I'm quite happy with third. I have no intention of getting involved in these two's uh, issues. I'm just going to follow them around and hope for trouble in front that I can then take advantage of. That trouble could still be coming because Ian Jones won't be happy to be settled for second place. He's had the lead in this race. He gave it up to Stephen Daly. He will be desperate beyond belief to get that race lead back and to take his third win of the season. Back out of Bobby's they go. Towards the final turn once again. I reckon they're going to see the last lap flag uh, and board this time around. Parks. With his headlights blaze though, which tells me that he is still pushing. That is racing driver body language for uh, you, and I think you should get out of my way. Uh, funnily enough, I don't think that's going to happen, Matt, but uh, you can continue to apply the pressure to the leading cars. Across the start finish line they go, and back up towards the uh, first corner once again, with Stephen Daly leading Owen Hunter, leading Matt Parks. To the brakes over Avon Rise, such a tricky part of the circuit there. You're braking on a turn, and it's over a blind crest, and it's bumpy quite narrow, there's no runoff area as well, there's no room for manoeuvre if you make a mistake there. It's a corner that catches people out frequently here at Castle Coombe. That's why there's a big crowd that's assembled around there at every race meeting that takes place here. It's always well supported as well at the uh, Castle Coombe racetrack. Always nice to see a, a big crowd on hand to enjoy the sensational racing they've been provided this weekend. There's that fight fourth I mentioned. Then we've got uh, Sam Carrington Yates ahead of Paul Hinson. Making their way through as Owen Hunter is ducking and diving all over Stephen Daly as they head down into a tower. But Stephen hasn't made that many mistakes this weekend, and any mistake he has been made, he's been able to fight back from pretty quickly. So he still hangs on to the race lead. So down towards the final corner we go, and Owen Hunter looking towards the outside, looking towards the inside. Daly, oh, there's a gap, there's a gap on the inside. Surely Hunter won't try and go through here. Daly's going to be late on the brakes. Yes, he is. Turns in towards the final turn, over the curb, back out towards the edge of the road, and Stephen Daly is going to see the chequered flag and win a fantastic race here at Castle Coombe. Race of the season by far. So Daly wins. Parks is elevated to second place, though, because Post-race, Owen Hunter was disqualified for the contact with Ian Jones, thus ending, realistically, his championship hopes, because you can't count a, a, squ a disqualification as a drop score. That's a real shame. Matt Parks there, confirmation that he got the fastest lap, as well as being elevated into second place with David May rounding out the podium. Alessandro Albano was a double retiree. Liam McGill was out in that one as well. And we also lost uh, Gordon McMillan, Ian Jones, and there is confirmation the exclusion for Owen Hunter he won't be happy about that, but that unfortunately ends his championship hopes. So with that in mind, here is how the championship looks. And Stephen Daly suddenly has a 43-point lead over Matt Parks. The fight really now is for second between Parks, Hinson and Owen Hunter, who could still get second place if the rest of the season goes his way. That was a tough battle out there. Congratulations on your win, but talk us through the race because there was so much going on. You're, you're absolutely right. There was a lot going on there. I mean, there wasn't a point where, I mean, I was down in third at one point and I was just looking at what Ian Jones and Owen were doing and really trying to push for them as well. And and unfortunately, some, something happened. I don't know what happened, but something happened with Ian. Just adrenaline. I, I don't know what happened, to be honest. But, um, yeah, ended up back with the, I ended up back with the lead on that lap. So, I mean, I wasn't really complaining at that point. And then Owen, Owen just... Plodding away, plodding away, plodding away, and you know what? We, me and Owen, have been very, very even this weekend. If not, Owen's had a little bit more pace. I've just been more fortunate with where I positioned my car at the right times, and we came away with the win. So I'm happy, and I'm glad to be going home now. <laughs> Matt, great to see you on the podium, particularly after what happened between qualifying and the first race. Some daring moves out there. Yeah, it's 
Thankfully, in the championship, like the BMW Compact Cup, it's so close. You you have to take those risks. You have to. It, it makes makes for great viewing, great TV, and um, it's my backyard. I need to get a podium at least, at least third, third at least. So uh, chuff the bits for that.